everyone. Welcome to another Classic Movie Monday, and today I thought I would discuss a film that, although it was fairly late and I think holds uh, some significance in regards to the epic war type film genre, uh, in particular to American uh, war filmmaking. And that film in particular is called, as you can see by the title, Saving Private Ryan. Now, the reason why I hold this film to a classic sort of label is due to the fact that it does approach, I think, war in a fairly realistic light, uh, unlike a lot of other war films that I've seen, where uh, you will sort of see the sort of uh, aspects that were relatively different, like for example Patton treats itself fairly differently as a war film compared to Saving Private Ryan. And I think really Saving Private Ryan really shifted sort of the tone when it comes to war films, in particular war films dealing with World War II. And instead of using uh, American patriotism in a way that's fairly um, uplifting and glorifying. It, it treats American patriotism as one of sacrifice and of nobility. And I think that that really holds true to this tale that they tell and in the film Saving Private Ryan. And not only do I think this film is noted for its good direction and action sequences, but also for its heartfelt sort of story, and for the characters as well, uh, which are developed to a certain extent, although I wouldn't say that these are characters that you will necessarily remember, but I will say that you will remember sort of what they represent and what they reflect in regards to what those soldiers were going through during that time. And also, this film is noted for being fairly realistic in the way it depicts certain action sequences. Um, and even the film itself starts off with the uh, action sequence taking place during Omaha Beach on D-Day. So, yes, you will get a significant portion of... Um, scenes that reflect that time period and those kinds of uh, obstacles that all of these different soldiers had to go through. Now, in regards to what Saving Private Ryan in particular is about, um, it is about this one soldier who happens to lose all of his other brothers and this touches the uh, generals that are, that are within the high ranks of the U.S. military, and they feel that they that it is necessary for um, the mother of these four children. I don't know if Ryan included is the fifth, or I, I believe he is. But basically, they feel like that since she's lost already so many children, it would only be the noble duty to bring the other child ultimately home, safe and sound. So, a whole team is sort of set up of soldiers to go out and find this particular person. Um, and they sort of, Spielberg sort of, I guess, took inspiration from various other stories, um, in particular within the Civil War, actually, because um, you will see that uh, the Civil War is sort of referenced within the film, especially when there's these various speeches going on within the film that talk about sort of what Abraham Lincoln wrote uh, when he was sort of communicating to those who've lost lives during that time. So it sort of tries to bring in this sort of American feel by trying to reflect America's past as well as the sort of present, at least in the context of when the story takes place. 
So basically that's one gist of the plot, but it's not necessarily about Ryan so much because Ryan ultimately does not show up until probably the last third of the film. But the majority of the film follows Tom Hanks' character, John H. Miller, who sort of leads this expedition to go after this one particular soldier, uh, James Ryan. So, played by Matt Damon. And there's all of these other soldiers that, um, that sort of are a part of this uh, expedition that have fairly um, unique ways of interpreting what to do in various situations and you'll see how this puts a strain on the group because um, some of the group members even feel like why are we even going out to find this one particular person like this is just a waste of time and others feel like it's sort of a civic duty and then you'll see how there's certain moral things that clash um, moral aspects that, that end up clashing that don't even have to really necessarily do with, with Ryan in particular, but you do see how there are these different kinds of people involved within this, um, within this mission and how that really, uh, it puts a little bit of a detriment onto the mission itself. There's also a side character that I think Although he is um, maybe probably not one of those noble characters, I think he's worth noting because I think he's probably given the most characterization out of all the other side characters because he sticks out sort of like a, as a sore thumb only because uh, he's not really meant for combat. He's meant to just be a translator and all he's usually gone for is to fire it in basic training, like literally that's that's mentioned within the story. And you can tell that he's not ready for any kind of combat. And he ultimately doesn't even really, even though he's forced into combat, he never ultimately uses his uh, weapon until a certain point, which you'll, you'll, you'll see within the film. But... I find it interesting how this side character in particular holds so much character within himself because you can already just tell by just the body language and his awkward nature and how timid he is and he's very passive. Even with even when at one point when they capture um, a German soldier uh, as they're going on their mission, he, he says, you know what, you should let this guy go. Um, even though they don't know if he'll go back to the enemy and tell them whatever information that they that he has in regards to these these soldiers, so really his role in the story um, seems to shine through through his character because his character does really stand out because a lot of the other soldiers do feel like that they are trained and that they know what they're doing. And that this one particular character is just so out of his element. And I can't, for the life of me, remember his name. But when you watch the film, you will see how sort of his character really reflects the sort of very, um, the, the very uncomfortable nature and surrounding um, within this, within this war and how that really affects him in particular because he's not even prepared for to deal with something like this. So that I think really shines through and um, gives the film sort of its, its depth. And I really do admire how it tries to address these kinds of um, war issues because I feel like it doesn't really take a side so much as a lot of other war films I feel do or you know makes it a, a big grandiose spectacle it kind of it kind of rep shows you really what war is um and I think it was one of the f one of those films that attempted to do that uh, but at the same time sort of 
be a little bit um, humble with its nature because World War II, I think, just has that um, reflection on our history as being something of a, maybe not necessarily a um, wanted war, obviously. I mean, war is never wanted, I believe. But it was something that brought out the courage and nobility of, of people and the willingness to to sacrifice um, themselves whenever it be necessary. And you'll see how Ryan's character sort of reflects that, uh, that nobility of being able to see beyond what ultimately led to the outcome of his, his brothers. And, and there's, there's, I think, although he's not in it for a very, fairly long time, you still feel the sense of, of, um, of character that he has when it comes to the circumstances that he's in. So, uh, I think overall this film, I think, addresses these aspects of war in a fairly even kiltered light. Um, it does, it, it is very graphic, and I think it is really noted for its graphic nature. But I think it's also known for its, um, its, for its strength to show the, the strong willpower that these, various individuals had going through their journey, uh, regardless of whether or not they ultimately survived. So I think in that sense, the film, I think, does a good job of balancing these sort of kinds of emotions of, of trauma and, and horror with also being fairly um, noble and... Um, and uplifting. So, I, I guess that can, you can maybe argue that other films have done that, but I think Saving Private Ryan in particular, I think, stands out to me as the one war film that I feel really balances these traits out well. And I think that also has to do with the fact that it's, it shows in particular to focus on World War II, and also because it was a fairly, um, fairly significant part of our current history, so, and by current, I mean 20th century history, so, uh, I think, though, ultimately, that's really all I can say about the film without really giving anything away, but, uh, I really would recommend it if you are interested in seeing a memorial-type esque film, and I thought since it's Memorial Day would be the best time to address it. But ultimately, I believe that's really all I can bring up. But if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But until next time, everybody.